Mm. Neighbor, please. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guys. Oh god, I really hope I don't get crucified for that. This is my review of Bad Boys for Life. Yeah, I saw this. Wasn't originally intending to. I was hanging out with friends and they were seeing it and it was a Tuesday, so I decided to go along. Not entirely fully willingly though. However, I was kind of interested in seeing how a Michael Bay product was going to be put together by not Michael Bay, and see how close these new directors would get to matching his style, his aesthetic. You could say a lot of things about the Baster. He's really, really bad at a lot of things. However, he knows how to blow stuff up, and he knows how to make it look good. The guy never has a static camera. He always has something in motion. Whether it's the camera or the actors, nothing is sitting still. It's like he's purposely made the film with 80 people in mind. This movie tries, whether it's between Will Smith and Martin Lawrence's dialogue and back and forth banter, which is pretty good, or the action scenes, which are attempting very, very hard to try and capture that Bay aesthetic, but it's just not there. It's like Discount Bay. Can't believe I'm actually saying that. They match his visual aesthetic to an extent in terms of how they capture the shots, the overabundance of saturation, and even some of the angles are straight out of Bay. They even have that trademark swoop blow with the telephoto but it never really gets there however it's not terrible even though it should be the film in short is really about this cartel that's got a hard-on to kill mike lowry will smith's character and they're taking out people who he's associated with and it's all has something to do with his past banter is kind of good in this there actually is a bit of humanity with these characters there is some form of development trying to happen martin lawrence is just playing an even older version of himself which apparently is me more and more nowadays. Will Smith is kind of coming to the realization that he isn't invincible, that he's not gonna be able to do this forever. Maybe he actually has to be more than just a Michael Bay action figure stereotype. And then the action is, it's trying. I feel that the last action scene is the best one. Building up to it, there are some scenes that are very, very boring. Like the first gunfight that actually happens, it's actually pretty standard. Kind of perplexing how timid it is. And then they slowly build up these scenes as the film goes on, but feels that they really get the stride of the baster in terms of his action filmmaking at the very end of the movie, but then it's the end of the movie. Either way, Bad Boys for Life isn't shit. Again, can't believe I'm saying that. But it's not standout. It's unfortunate that this movie was in the IMAX theater when 1917 rightfully, rightfully should be in there. It's definitely better than Gemini Man. I feel that they were shot at the exact same time because there's a lot of times where Will Smith looks to be wearing the exact same costume he was wearing in certain points of Gemini Man. Either way, I can't condemn this movie for being terrible. The story's okay. The action's okay. It's just a generally okay put together movie. It's not horrible. It deserves the credit where the credit's due, I guess. In the end, I'm gonna give Bad Boys for Life the non bay edition a 3 out of 7. Speaking of which, though, there is a cameo in this movie, which is probably one of the best cameos of the year. I'll leave it for you guys to find out, but it's pretty great. Anyways, guys, that's all for me. I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, maybe subscribe. I will also have a link to my friend Mark's reviews. He does a lot of written reviews. He kind of finds moments that I don't really point out, and he has a little bit more of a literary sort of ideal to reviewing films that I can't do because me no type were good. Anyways, check out that link. I'll put a link for that in the description below when he's finished. It depends on who's finished first, me or him. So we'll see. Anyways, that's all for me. See you guys next time. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say The Click is finally getting back together in an all-new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.